Hi everybody, um, this was sent to me from Anonymous. I'll donate to the channel when I can. I came across this news article on my wall feed this morning. I, f I believe this is a classic example of NP Day involving a married couple and the newborn baby. I am submitting this in hopes of raising the importance of, of, aware of awareness and going no contact. A video along with the news article is attached. I'm not sure if you want to play the, view, the video for the viewers to hear or read the article or both, whichever you would like. Thank you. Anonymous. We have chilling police body cam footage for you tonight. Police are warning a local woman she could end up dead from domestic violence, and just six months later, that's exactly what detectives say happened. Here's WAP's lead investigator, Kieran Chala, with a rare look at the domestic violence from the front lines. Not a line with your emergency. Uh, I need somebody to come to 8600 Chauvin Lane as soon as possible. This is the 911 call Sam Clark Jr. made October 1st, 2015, around 8.15 at night, asking for officers because of his wife, Kimberly Nicole Perkins. She had one in her pocket, which she's not supposed to have. I got $500 to get down the right cabinet. Okay? And I want to find out what's going on. Earlier this year... He's saying that he's calling the cops because she's trying to leave and he's missing $500. Here in March, Kim's body was found dumped in a bayou in St. Landry Parish. She had been shot twice in the head. Her husband allegedly confessed to the killing, claiming she was trying to leave him. This call is from six months before when the couple lived in Livonia. While Clark was on the phone with 911, his wife was trying to leave with the children. You're not leaving. You're not leaving. Kim, don't leave this house. Kim, don't leave this house because you know you're doing wrong. Okay, what's your name, sir? My name is Sarah Clark, and she is walking out of the house with my baby. Lieutenant Aaron Biddy with the Livonia Police Department was one of the responding officers. Something just ate at me. What ate at you? It was a piece of property to him. It didn't matter. He wanted what he wanted, and nothing that she wanted mattered. What happened? She was a piece of property. He wanted what he wanted. Nothing that she wanted mattered. And that night was caught on another responding officer, Sergeant John Thibodeau's body camera. I want a drug testing, and I want to find out what the hell's going on. I want to find out where my money's going. When Sergeant Tib, he wants the police to drug test her because she's his wife. Thibodeau yeah. spoke to Kim privately. She told him, "He grabbed me around my throat and choked me and twisted my leg to where it almost broke." I'm telling you. Okay. When that happened last week. I'll go. Tonight, Kim told officers that she did not have a key to the gun cabinet. There was only one key, and he kept it. I just want to find out where the ten dollars come from and the cigarettes. That's all I want. No, now, we'll show you. Don't let her have no money. She can't have no, no money. She can have money to touch your Then Why are you worried about where her ten dollars come from? Because I want to know. Because I got five hundred dollars missing out of her house. But both officers told Clark you cannot force her. To go take a drug test because you're married to her. They don't work like that. You cannot control a woman like you're trying to do right here. When everyone went inside the house, Sergeant Thibodeau pulled Kim aside and she spoke out about past incidents, including what she said happened the night before. He put a gun in my head the other night. I don't, I'm not going to say nothing about that, but he put a loaded gun to my head and threatened to shoot me. And you know what? I wasn't scared. I was ready for it to happen. Officers repeatedly asked if she wanted to pursue charges. She said no. But physical marks on her neck from him allegedly choking her gave them enough reason to take it upon themselves to arrest him. Stop. Turn around. Watch out. What do you, you want to arrest me for? Why are you arresting me? Why are you arresting me? Wait. Do not do this. Why are y'all arresting him? Domestic violence. Domestic violence. No. Louisiana law uh, allows an officer to take the steps to protect the victim in those cases. It's pretty obvious. Oh, it, it is. 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 It
I ain't put no fucking gun out here. Clark was arrested and charged with domestic abuse battery by strangulation and aggravated assault with a firearm. But because this was a domestic violence case, a bond could not be set without a Gwen's Law hearing. At that hearing, however, Kim, perhaps out of fear, changed her story and said she wanted Clark to be free. His bond was set only at $5,000, and the charges reduced from felonies to misdemeanors. Perhaps the most chilling part of the officer and Kim's conversation is this. Do you want to be on the news as a statistic meeting another domestic female gets killed because she feared to leave? Is that what you want? No. Because honestly, this is where it's going. You get these cases, you work them over the years, and... You hope for the best, you never hear nothing about it. And this one slaps you back in the face six, eight months later. And unfortunately, she's dead. And Kim lived in fear. Proof? Her last post on Facebook the night before her body was found. If I die, say Sam Jr., her husband. And Lieutenant Biddy did just that. Called the St. Landry detective saying they needed to go question her husband. Unfortunately, Kim has become another domestic violence statistic and a typical case of living in fear and too scared to speak up at the Gwen's Law hearing that could have kept her husband behind bars without bond. You can't stand in open court of, and look at somebody you're afraid of and worry about what's going to happen and, and tell the truth. Which is why many law enforcement officials say the Gwen's Law is a great tool, but needs some tweaking to provide victims like Kim even more protection. With the Nine News investigators in Poinkapie Parish, Kim Charla, WAFB, Nine News. All the new laws in the world are not going to change the situation. Obviously, an extreme case of narcissistic personality disorder and a woman who is entangled by it probably from a lot of times why a lot of people stay in abusive relationships, their own guilt, their own abuse where they feel they deserve it. The government just wants to pass laws and that's it. They just want to deal with the consequences and never, ever, ever the root cause. You see, if they if they cared about about fixing this problem instead of being able to just to throw people in jail, and don't get me wrong, these people these are the people who do deserve to be in prison. Okay, they would do more than just pass a law that says you get X amount of time if you do this, if you do this, if you do this. No. In all domestic cases, there needs to be an immediate psych evaluation of the abuser with the understanding of what, of what personality disorders are because most domestic abusers are narcissistic personality abusers. That's why they deal with it. It's over narcissism or other, some other kind of, of, of personality disorder. That's why they do it. And that is what is never, ever addressed. Because if it was, they would understand that the woman has been in this dynamic where they're afraid to speak up. And they say the women are afraid to speak up, or even the men sometimes are afraid to speak up, but they don't say why. They don't go into the specifics of narcissism. There isn't an immediate, regardless of what the, the, the woman says, there was evidence of abuse in this case. The marks were there shouldn't have mattered at that point there should have been a time of separation mandatory time of separation three months six months to let the woman regroup because there is physical evidence of abuse you had the body cam footage of what she's saying there so why when she walks in the court in front of this guy is that given more credence to what she says when she's separated from him when he's obviously abusing her? All the laws in the world aren't going to change this. Not until the government, the justice, the justice, uh, the justice departments of the country step in with the mental health organizations and discover narcissism. But as we, as the problem is, the mental health. Most therapists have no idea about narcissism because they're narcissists themselves. 
That's why at the first sign of abuse, you got to go because this is where it's going to lead. This is where it leads if you hang in long enough. The woman had given up. She didn't care if he killed her or not. Much like the, the last video. If you keep going back, this is where it leads. And all the laws in the world aren't going to change that. The cop knew. The cop told her right there, you're gonna be you're gonna be on the news. And she ended up being so. Why? Because personality disorders and mental health issues aren't discussed, barely discussed in court. It's a cookie cutter. It's a money making it's a money making scheme. And it's a shame. So let this be a lesson to everybody who's in this type of situation that this is where it's going to lead to. I'm going to leave the link to so you can watch the video yourself and see it in the description box. Um, thank you to the person who sent, sent this in to me. I appreciate it. It's a very sobering reminder to everybody, whether you're a woman or a man, being abused of where this is going to lead and the entitlement that you're a piece of property. You would think, even though he got arrested that night, just that alone, that's a problem. That there should be something, somebody you could call when he's talking about her like that over the ownership, like a slave. It's a real, it's a real shame. And then you go to court and you get this cold, did this happen, did, not understanding they say they do, but they don't by their, their actions prove otherwise. They say they understand women. And no, you don't even under, you might acknowledge the fear, but you don't even acknowledge of where the fear comes from and how diabolical the personality disorder of narcissism is. So thank you again. I really appreciate it. Thank you, everybody who's watching. Please leave any opinions or comments in the comment section below. And if you have something you would like to, like on the channel, you like your story read, you have an audio clip you'd like me to go over, you know what to do, or you just or if you, you just like to contribute to the channel and see it grow, you know what to do with the PayPal link in the description box. I'll have the video right back to you. This is Ali Matthews. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all again soon. Bye.